Thank you so much, Pastor Henry, for the great work you guys are doing here, and it's a great privilege for us to be here today. Amen? Amen. Man, we just want to appreciate Pastor Tafare and Mama Chipo, who are really, and I hope they are really enjoying and taking some good rest. Amen? But what a privilege it is to have great leaders that are able to raise up people that even in their absence, the work still carries on. Amen? Where they don't have to be worried about if things are in place and if Pastor Henry is behaving, you know. But man, what a great, great privilege. So we love them. They are dear friends and brothers and sisters to us. And so coming to Faith Hill Church is always a great privilege for us just to serve. And I hope that what God has placed in our heart today will really be a great blessing to you. Amen? We just want to also appreciate the leadership as well for also just agreeing to allowing us to come in to serve in you. Man, designer life is coming up. I tell you, I tell you, I'm not, I know the announcer had said that, you know, the men are not forgotten, and I'm glad you remembered us as well. <laughs> but we are coming, and we are going to be serving and be part of it, and we're excited to also partake of what God will be speaking to the ladies, even though we might be hiding and, you know, taking some of that as well. But man, the theme this year, I believe, is destined to succeed destined to succeed and i want you to know that god's heart is that you and i will succeed in life amen in god's mind it's too late his mind is already made up about you you are already a success amen it's too late you are already a success but the invitation is really will you Accept the invitation to experience in that which he has for you, or will you just ignore it? But regardless of what you decide, he still loves you. You see, here's the thing. There was a man called Paul Lazarus. He's referred to as Paul Lazarus in the Bible. Man, he went to heaven, but the guy lived the most pathetic life on earth. He went to heaven. But he lived the most pathetic life whilst he was alive. And then you see a man called Abraham who went to heaven, but also enjoyed heaven on earth. Amen. Amen? Amen. Man, I've been poor and I've had a little bit, and it's better with the little bit you have than being poor. <laughs> Amen? So I want to encourage us to really just open our hearts this morning. And I want to really challenge us. And my heart always is always to really challenge people not to settle for less than who you are in Christ. Man, the price paid was too much for you not to take advantage of it. You know, I remember when Annalene and I, my wife and I, uh, watched the Passion, of the, um, the Passion of Christ. Many years back it came out. Man, she was crying, she was crying, and I was getting angry and angry the more she cried. <laughs> I said, why are you crying? Because what it did to me, it made me so angry to see the price he paid, which was really nothing in comparison to the actual price that Jesus actually paid and the things he suffered. And I'm thinking, man, devil, you will never torment me ever again in my life. Oh, man, the holy anger rose. I said, no, this is not an opportunity to cry, but this is an opportunity to make you so angry never to entertain the enemy at any point when they knock on your door. Because now I know what he paid for me that I will never have to pay for it again. Amen? Amen? So I want to speak to us about one of the fundamentals of success. You see, here's the thing. Everything great in life begins from the root. Everything great. Everything great in life begins from the root. And here's the thing. To every great place in life, there's a path. To every great place... There's a way. And you and I, by redemption, are seated far above. Mm. The Father's heart is that you and I will rise in the high places of life. Mm. Amen? But to every place, there's a path. If we want to go to Durban, there are many ways to get to Durban. Amen? But there's the best way to get to Durban. The scripture says, many are the plans of a man, but it's the Lord's counsel. That stands. But Jesus said, but I am the way. So there's the way, and there are the many ways of man. So you are either doing it by the ways of man, or you are doing it by the way 
of Christ. And I've said this many times that in life you crawl, you walk by common sense. And common sense has made spirit-filled believers so common, it's not funny. Common sense. You run by principles, but you only fly through divine instructions. The scripture says, who are these who fly? Why? Because you belong to the top. Amen? And the key to flying in life is doing it God's way. The key to fly is doing it God's way. Amen? So what are we saying? If we go to Exodus chapter 11, verse 3, Exodus chapter 11, verse 3, speaking about the man Moses, the scripture talks about how God may, he was made very great. Right? He was made very great. And then in Psalms chapter 103, verse 7, the scripture says, and the Lord made known his ways to Moses. So the ways of the Lord made known to him was what made him great. And so those who know the ways of God end up causing the waves of life. Oh, you don't have to fight them. Just know his ways, apply yourself to his ways, and I tell you, you cause waves. They will come and watch you burn. It doesn't matter whether you are in the bush, they will come and find you. They will come and find you. But we must know the ways of the Lord so you and I can cause. You are the salt of the light. Amen? But we must know his ways so that we can cause the waves in life. And so really my heart today is really to stir and to make your appetite. Your taste buds for work to come alive. So one of the fundamentals of success is what I call diligence. Diligence. Behind every great thing that is working, there's somebody at work behind it. Destined to succeed. No lazy man has, read, has ever made a mark in life. Amen. And I'll show you through scriptures, especially for us who understand the gospel and especially the grace. I'll show you now to see how grace is seeking opportunity to labor through you. No lazy man has ever made a mark in life. And so for you and I to succeed, to take our place in life the way God has intended for you and I, we are going to have to be diligent. Amen? Amen. And my heart is really provoke you that when you leave this place, your taste bud for work will come alive. Amen. You see, here's the thing. You don't get tired because of how much you do. You get tired from the place where you work from. Okay. Oh, man, I tell you. There's a lady called Kerry Pickett and Duwomek, Pastor Chipo, let's bring it home. I always say to her, how do you do it? You're a mother, you're a business, you do this, you do this, you do this. But I know how she does it, Grace. Grace. So you don't get tired because of how much you do. There are people that do more than you will ever do, but they are the most refreshed people ever. You don't get tired based on how much you do. You get tired from which place you are working from. But there's a place to work from that goes beyond your physical abilities. That keeps you going and going and going and going. Amen? So let's go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 10. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence... Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. Verse 8, for if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9, it says, for he who lacks these things in is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. And then verse 10, therefore, brethren, even be more diligent. We started with giving all diligence. We're ending with be more diligent. Be more diligent. Hear this, to make your call and election sure. Oh, please hear my heart. And this is the right place because this is a church that understands the gospel and the grace of God. Okay, you are called, you have been elected. But he says that in order for the calling and the election to be sure, 
It is you and I's responsibility to be diligent. The scripture says, study to show yourself approved. God has already approved you. But you and I have the responsibility to study so that you can show yourself that God has approved you. You don't study to try and make yourself sound like you know something. And that's one of the disadvantages when it comes to Bible school because there are many who come and they live very fat-headed and very skinny-hearted. Because knowledge puffs you up. But you are not studying to trying to prove yourself that you know something, but you are studying to show me, hey, Isaac, for some, let me say this, some of us were not the best food on the menu. So the scripture says David encouraged himself. So some of us had to encourage ourselves. Some of you, when you walk into a room, all eyes turn. Some of us, when we walk into a room, all eyes turn away. <laughs> eh? So some of us had to encourage ourselves. But you study to show yourself that, hey, God has approved you. God loves you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. So that when the voices and the noises of the enemy comes, you are not moved by those because you've known, you've shown yourself through the word that God has approved you. And that's why you study. That's why you study. And so what are we saying? Diligence is the secret to greatness. Diligence is the secret to champions. Two things I enjoy doing the most in life. I love to watch houses. I love houses. I create things in my head. I love beautiful homes. But the second thing I enjoy, which is a passion of mine, is I love to watch documentaries of successful people, especially sports people, because I used to be a sportsman. But here's the thing. Every great sportsman that you are buying their T-shirt and paying money to see, you know what they do? When you are sleeping and snowing, they are busy at work. You pay money to buy their T-shirts. A T-shirt with just their name. You buy their shoes. They get all the money. You give them all your hard work, earn money. You know why? Because when you are snowing at night, they are at work. There's a man called Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, basketball players. Oh, man, I tell you, you should see some documentaries on them. When you are sleeping, they are busy crafting their, their gift. They sharpen their gift when you are sleeping. You see, the gifting is in you. You already have the gift, but the question is, what are you doing with it? So they go on to succeed. If I say Lionel Messi, everybody knows Messi. You know why? Watch documentaries on Messi. From a young age, he's been training, practicing how to kick a soccer ball. <coughs> diligence, 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 diligence. He's been diligent. Tiger Woods, diligence. Playing golf, diligence, diligence. The secret of champions. The secret of champions. God's mind is made up about you succeeding. But for you and I to walk in the realities of success, diligence is key. You know, God deals with me on different seasons in my life to show me certain things. But there was a time where he wanted me to know my identity and what I have. But I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't just want to know what I have and be limited to that in my spirit. You see, it's good to know that you've got healing and it's in your spirit. It begins with that. But I don't want to know that I've got healing, but I'm sick in my body. I don't want to know that I've got peace, but I'm the most angry person alive. I don't want to know that I've got the love of God in my heart, but I'm the most hateful person. I want the truth and the realities of what is on the inside to become my life's experiences. So when you talk about me being healed, I experience healing in my body. If you talk about the fact that, man, I'm, I've got love, I want to be loving to my wife and to people. If you tell me that I've got peace, I don't just want to have peace on the inside, but I want the peace to be the expressions of my life. So this is the practical side of how do I bring out the realities of what is in my spirit to be in my life's experiences. There are many who are stuck knowing of what they have on the inside, but they are the most, they live pathetic lives. But the heart of the Father is that you and I will experience the realities of what is on the inside. Man, don't tell me I'm rich, but it's in my spirit. <laughs> you see, there are practical things that you must take. And Billy puts it beautifully. He said, money is not pursued, money is attracted. But you have to invest in yourself. 
And guess what? It takes diligence yeah. to invest in yourself. Yeah. No lazy man has ever made a mark in life. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's no slot for the slothful. There's no slot for the slothful. But we must be diligent. We must be diligent. We must be diligent. And so what is diligence? Number one, it is the persistent, the determined, the constant and earnest effort to complete an assignment or a task. Or you give yourself to it. Or you give yourself to it. Working hard is the key to flying high in life. And working hard is the cure to living a hard life in life. There's a friend of ours, he studied to be a, as a lawyer. For five years he's been at home, he hasn't been working. So I said to him, well, why don't you go and find something at McDonald's? He says, no, no, no. I can't work at McDonald's. I said, well, I can't help you. I can't help you. Then I can't help you. Laziness. You rather sit at home and wait for the perfect opportunity than to put your hand to something. I said, I can't help you. I can't help you. Number two, what is diligence? It's to be tireless, to be a tireless worker. To be a tireless worker. There's a story in Genesis chapter 26 about the man Isaac. The Lord spoke to him, and so he had to dig wells. Man, he dug the first one, and then the enemies, the Philistines, came in the closet. Wow. He went on, he dig the second one, they came to close it. Sure. He went on. You see, some of us, after the first one, will give up. <laughs> when you are diligent, you will give yourself tirelessly to it. The scripture, give yourself entirely to the word. Some of us, after the first time that someone, opposition came, we gave up. You see, a diligent person is tireless at work. I will not give up until I see what God has said come to pass. Tireless. You give yourself. Number three, what is diligence? It's to be creative and innovative in your work. <laughs> to be creative and innovative in your work. Joseph was bound in slavery until the creative ability came out. He was bound in slavery for over 20 years. And then he became creative. It ended the grip and the bounds of slavery. <coughs> Creativity. Looking for new ways of doing your work better. Creativity. Creativity. A diligent person seek opportunities to making things better. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. And this is where I want to bring us to. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Paul is speaking and he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So first and foremost, he's acknowledging the fact that he's everything that he is because of the grace of God. And I hope you do the same too. You're not who you are because of your gift. Everything you are is only by the grace of God. But he says this, he says, hey, listen, but the grace that God has given me towards me was not in vain. So you know what that means? Grace in your life can be in vain. He said, but I chose not to allow God's grace to be in vain. Why? Because I labored. I don't know how many people he was speaking to, but he says, but I labored more than ye all. Oh. I labored more than ye all, but guess what? But not him who was at work, but grace that was working. So grace is always seeking opportunity to labor. Let me humble you. The grace of God is God's anointing, God's giftings, God's empowerment, God's endowment. But grace minus diligence or labor equals disgrace. <laughs> for grace to find expression or for you to experience the graces of God in your life, you have to labor. He says, I labor more than ye all. But in the labor, it wasn't from a place of his own flesh. He gave grace opportunity to labor through him. And so you are not tired because of how much you are doing. Some of us do so much. Activities is not, does not replace productivity. You see, man, I know people that labor. Behind every great thing working is somebody at work. 
Andrew Womack is one of the greatest, the most diligent person I know. To put TV programs daily, you better make sure you are diligent. You better make sure you are diligent. It doesn't just happen. You have to be diligent. What are we saying? Man, the opportunities God has given you at work, give yourself to it. Be diligent with your work. Amen? Be diligent with your work. Be diligent with your work. Be diligent with your work. Be diligent at your work and whatever God has committed to you. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11. It says, be diligent to enter into your rest. Even the rest that you have in the Lord, you have to be diligent to enter into rest. It says, labor into your rest. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter the rest. Because when the doctor tells you that, hey, you are going to die in six months, but the word of God is telling you that you will live to fulfill the number of your days, you better be diligent to making sure that you know the word of the Lord and not let the word of the doctors affect you in any way. It takes diligence. Because everything is staring at you in your face. The symptoms are staring at you. But you have to be diligent to know what God has said and live in that which God has said so that the effect of what people are saying does not affect your heart. We have to be diligent. We have to be diligent. And so everything God has spoken concerning you will always call for diligence. Everything. And the scripture says he has not called you according to your works, but according to his purpose and his grace. And so the purpose will always be bigger than you. But he gives you grace equally to be able to fulfill the purpose that is bigger than you. Oh, man. Man, you, man I tell you, it makes you see things in a whole different way. Grace will always take you beyond yourself. When you learn to know how to ride with the Holy Spirit, when to make a move and how to make moves. When they speak 1,000 words, you just need to speak 10 words. And it's more valuable. It's not how much you talk. It's the value you bring to the table. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, concerning Jesus, the scripture says, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about, not sitting around. Who went about? You see, people think when they're anointed, they have to sit behind and take. The anointing, the grace, is for you and I to go about. Hmm. Put your hand to work. Amen? Amen? You are destined to succeed. Amen. We are destined to succeed. But for success to become the realities of our lives, we must be diligent. Firstly, in knowing what the Lord has said concerning you and I and applying ourselves to the things that he said concerning you. So even if you don't have the qualification and you go for an interview, man, you remember those words that says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Even though others will be coming with all their qualifications, but you know the truth of what God has said, that if God told you to go for that work and you don't have qualification for it, I will not be intimidated, but I'll be diligent in reminding myself of the truth and the realities of what I am in the Lord and what God has said concerning me. An idle man, we say, is the devil's workshop. An idle man is the devil's workshop. If you are slothful, you will always miss your slot in life. Christianity is not for lazy people. If you read the scriptures carefully, everyone Jesus appointed was always appointed at the place of work. Oh, he goes to the sea, he sees Matthew. So he sees Peter fishing. He said, man, if I can get that guy, I'll make him fishes of men. You remember when Samuel went to anoint David? His brothers came, they paraded. They probably shaved, they cut their hair, they put on their best suits. Samuel goes, he says, says, surely there has to be another son. The father said, there he is, tending the sheep. There he is, tending the sheep. He was found working. He was found working. He was found working. He was found working. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, the King James Version, please. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. It says, Seest thou a man diligence in his business, he shall stand before kings. 
He shall not stand before me, amen. And so diligence will upgrade even your association in life. He will stand before kings. The key to standing before kings is you being diligent in what you are doing and what God has called you to do. It upgrades your associations. Kings become your client. Oh, we've tasted it. Kings become your client. You give yourself to the call to making that call a sure thing. You look for ways to improving yourself. What are you willing to get rid of so that you can become everything God has called you to be? What are you willing to do extra to sharpening your craft in what God has called you to be? And so experience has become one of the biggest hindrances for many to experiencing the better things God has for them. Oh, just because they tasted some good success two years ago, they are comfortable. There's more that God has for you. If you can be diligent. So you always want to see opportunities. Our musicians here seek ways, better ways of doing things. You are sharpening your craft. You are sharpening your craft. Always wanting to get better. Amen? And that's how we get to the top and where God has called us to be. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 24. It says, the hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Diligent people end up as rulers. Diligent people always end up as rulers. Oh, man, this is going to get fun. Oh, glory. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. It says, The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is a man's precious possession. And then let's go to Proverbs 14, 23. Proverbs 14, 23 says, In all labor there is profit. In all labor there is profit. Everything you labor in, you always profit from. In all labor. Whatever you are diligent in, you will always see profit in it. In all labor there is profit. But he says, But idle chatter leads to poverty. But idle chatter leads to poverty. The reason why many have remained on the floor is because they are busy chatting at work instead of working at work. <laughs> they know every business about everybody. <laughs> and they wonder why they don't get promoted. He says, idle chatter leads to poverty. Instead of being diligent and maximizing the time, the company is paying you for the time you are employed, but they are busy chatting and they are remaining in poverty. Man, you see this everywhere, guys. You see this everywhere. He's giving you the keys that as we apply ourselves to this, we can ride in the wing, on the wings of his glory where he's called us to be. It pays to work. It pays to labor. But hear this. The work is not from the place of me trying to do something to make God do something. But I recognize the grace of God in my life. Amen? And I'm giving grace an expression in the things that I do. I'm not trying to move God in anything. I'm not trying to make God do something. But I'm, I recognize the potentials. Greater is he who is on the inside. The potentials of me being able to live in the best places in life. And I'm not going to settle below my privileges in Christ. Amen? I will not settle below my privileges in Christ. Oh, man. So let's go to... Oh, man, there's just so much, so much, so much to say here. Okay. I'm going to end by just a few things here, but in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, from the King James Version, please, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the first assignment God gave man was work. The first assignment. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, he says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it. You see, whatever you dress will dress you your work that you are dressing. He gave them the garden of Eden to what? To dress. As he was dressing the garden, the garden was dressing him. As he was keeping the, the garden, the garden was keeping him. Good. When you dress your work, the, your work will dress you. The reason why you've got clothes on your back, the reason why you are dressed today is because you worked and they gave you money to buy what you are wearing. But those who don't have is because they are not at work. 
The first assignment God gave man was work. So I know sometimes in the grace community, when you talk about work, antennas goes up. But when you understand grace, you realize that grace empowers you. Grace is seeking opportunities. He says, I labor more than ye all, but not me, but the grace of God. Grace is seeking opportunities and wanting to labor. And so when you understand the grace of God, man is a guitarist. Man, Lord, I will not settle until this gifting is crafted. To, until, my, until I sharpen this gift. You find ways and means of how do I get better? How do I do better? You invest in yourself to making sure that I'm connecting with people who know better than I do so that I can sharpen my craft. Because when you are sharpened, it requires more energy to use a knife that is blunt. That's it. There's nothing better to see a man who is functioning in their gifting. When they've sharpened their craft. Oh, it's beautiful to see. That's why you watch Lionel Messi. Because he does things with his feet. That the others cannot do it. Guess what? He's taking time to be diligent. To sharpen his craft. And you sit and you go, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> but he's making all the money. <laughs> you who went to watch, how much money do you have? But you pay to go watch him. He works so calmly, effortlessly, doesn't argue with anybody. He's got the money. Why should I argue? He's been diligent. He doesn't need to argue. You've come to watch him. You've paid to watch him. He's got the money. He's going home. <laughs> you are busy screaming. He's calm and collected. He's got the money. He's got the money. He's got the money. Amen. The key is diligent. And God has given you an eye, gifted. That needs to be sharpened. Amen. Amen. Someone said, the wealthiest place on the face of the planet is a graveyard. Because they were not diligent to sharpen their gift. Diligence. And so let's look at some few characteristics of the diligence. Some few characteristics of the diligence. Number one, diligent people are always eager and excited to work, no matter the level of the work. And this is why I love and warm up ministries and carries Bible college. As a director, I clean the floor, I clean toilets. It's not about titles. When you are diligent, you are excited and eager to do whatever the occasion demands. <laughs> to do whatever the occasion demands. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7. Please, if this is not highlighted in your Bible, I will encourage you to highlight the scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7. It says, And let it be when the signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands. You do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. Those who understand God being with them don't have a problem doing whatever the occasion demands. So if what the occasion demands is me cleaning the auditorium as a pastor, as a director, because I know that God is with me, I can do it. If it's about cleaning the toilets, we will do it with the same zeal and passion and excitement. Amen. Oh, no, I can't do that. I studied to be a doctor. Why am I not going to do that? No. No. Diligent people are always excited to do whatever the occasion demands. You put your hand to whatever. Whenever you are need, hey, we need somebody to do something. You jump to it. That's why I love your pastors. Pastor T and Pastor Chipo. Uh, even though he's a pastor, whatever that needs to Today he's doing recordings. Today he's helping with the media. Doing, uh. It's not titles. It's not about titles. Amen? But we have to be so flexible in our hearts to do whatever the occasion, occasion demands. Man, what does it require for us to be diligent? Number one, make the most of your time. Make the most of your time. A diligent person is a person who does not waste time. You know, in life, there are time wasters. People that have nothing to do, so they want to come and waste your time. They've got nothing to do. They know everything about everybody. And they like to look for you so that they can waste your time. But a diligent person does not waste time. Amen. Amen? Time is lost. You can't get it back. Don't let people waste your time. Number two, be a hard worker. Give your best whatever is committed to you. 
Give it your best. Give it your best. You give your best to anything you are committed with. That when you leave that thing, you say to yourself, there's nothing else. I've. You see, as a sportsman, I understand it. The worst thing or the worst thing to do is to lose a game when you knew you could have done something better. Give your best in anything you are doing in life. Give it your best. You give your best in anything you are asked to do. If it's to clean the toilet, you shine the toilet till you see your face in that thing. <laughs> oh, uh, guys, I'm being serious. I'm being serious. You see, oftentimes people are looking for great opportunities when God is looking for you to see how you handle the small things in life. Oh, one day when I become, what are you doing now? Oh, one day when I, uh, what are you doing now? And how do you do the things that you do now that God has committed to you? Diligent people pay attention to what they do. You must stay focused. You must stay focused. Amen? If you're employed to do something at work, do that thing and be the best in doing that thing. Stop interfering with other people's business. That's what the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. It says, aspire to live a quiet life and mind your own business. I said, I, I said to someone, and I said, you know, you do know it says in the Bible, mind your own business. They said, well, they couldn't believe. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. They couldn't believe it, so I had to show them that it's in the, it's in the Bible. But you have to mind your own business. And then lastly, what does it require for us to be diligent? Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. Second Corinthians chapter 10, sorry, chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. It says, and in this I give advice. So Paul is advising us. He says, it is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were doing and were designed to do a year ago. Amen. Verse 12, verse 11. But now you must also complete the doing of it. So don't just only be a good starter. You must finish what you start. So diligent people don't only start, but they finish. Amen. Diligent people don't only start, but they finish. Sometimes, no, God told me to come. And then two months later, they are gone. But what did God change his mind? <laughs> <laughs> diligent people not only start something, but they only finish. You know, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He's not just an alpha. He finishes what he starts. Amen. What are we trying to say? Guys, God has called us, and by redemption, you and I are success. We are the salt and the light of the world. Amen. But our heart is that you and I will rise and be awakened to the truth of who God says you are and apply ourselves. Amen. Don't just be comfortable knowing that you've got peace, which is in your spirit. Amen. Purpose. To learn how to release that peace so that you can be a peaceful person in life. Thank you, Lord. Don't just know that you are prosperous, but in your spirit, that you are struggling to pay your rent. I want the prosperity in my spirit to become my life's expression. Amen? Amen? Amen. The one of the things to do is that you be diligent. No lazy man has made a mark in life. And no lazy man has ever risen to the top. If they did, they came down very quickly Then they got there. Amen? So when you understand the gospel, you will learn. It's just time. He went. Jesus, how Jesus says. Let me, let, just, let me just give you one scripture that we can just go quickly. Oh, man. Mark chapter, Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Mark 16, verse 20. It says, and they went out and preached everywhere. Please watch this. And the Lord working with them. God is a worker. But he works with those who work. As they went out to work, guess what? He was working with them. Confirming, giving them the victories. Giving them the success. He works with you. Guys, even, even in the work you are doing, oh, man. 
He delights in every detail of your life. We think when we get to work, Jesus is not there. No, include him, involve him in your work. He can work with you to show you things and ways that will take you to the top in that company. Don't complain with the rest of them. Don't chat because others are chatting. Be focused and know why you are there and recognize the Lord in it and work with the Lord. He delights in working with you and the Lord working with them and the Lord working with them and the Lord working with them and the Lord working with them. Lord. Oh man, the Lord is a worker. Yes. Amen? He, he, the scripture, he works in you both to will and to do. Amen. He works in you. Amen? So my heart is to let your taste, your appetite for work come alive. Not to think that because, you know, because of what Jesus has done, I'm supposed to say, no, it's supposed to empower you to do more, to go beyond. Amen?